You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Just hours from now, polls will open in Georgia for early voting in the presidential primary election. And there are some changes you need to know about if you're planning to go. 11 Alive's Liza Lucas joins us in Fulton County with more. Good morning, Liza. Good morning. Yes, a significant change for Georgia voters who can now take up to two hours off of work during the early voting process to cast their ballots. That change went into effect in July, though you do need to check on that time off with your employer before just heading out the door. But that is something to know about. And we have some other reminders to kind of walk you through this morning as polls are set to open soon. Now, keep in mind the early voting period does run through today through March 8th. You can cast your ballot at any advanced voting location in your county. You just want to make sure that you check your registration status and bring your government issued photo ID. Now, Georgia is an open primary state, so prepare for poll workers to ask you if you want a Republican or Democratic ballot. Now, hours do vary depending on where you live. So before you head out the door to the polls, check on those locations, check on those hours, and we've got information for you as well on 11alive.com. Sending it back to you. All right, all starting this morning, Liza, and right now on 11 Alive. Live.com. We have in-depth stories related to the presidential primary, early voting, absentee ballots, and more. We'll make it easy for you. You can text the word voting to the number there on your screen, 404-885-7600, and we'll send you a link. Atlanta City Council meets today where they'll discuss a no right turn on red proposal. 11 Live's Jerry Carnes joins us live. And Jerry, you've been following this proposal pretty closely. That's right, Ariana. Good morning. The public will get a chance to weigh in on the idea of eliminating right on red within the city of Atlanta prior to this afternoon city council vote. The proposal that is on the table right now is to completely eliminate right turns at red lights in downtown Atlanta, in Midtown and Castleberry Hill. City Councilman Alex Wan says he doesn't support the idea of doing it piecemeal. He believes if the city is going to eliminate right on red, it should be done throughout the city and not just in certain areas. The the city's transportation committee debated the issue for close to an hour last week before passing the idea along to the full city council. The city council meeting will take place this afternoon beginning at one o'clock. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Taking a live look at the Atlanta airport today, the city council could also vote to restrict access to the terminals for the general public. Now, this would not apply to ticket holding passengers, people picking up or dropping off or employees. They say the reason is to improve security and reduce loitering by those experiencing homelessness. The city also says restricting access 24 seven will also help cut down on crime. That was a look at your top headlines. All right, Chesley, a few clouds to start us off this morning. Yeah, you can see them right there. No precipitation coming out of these clouds at all. And those clouds will fade away as we head toward mid morning and into early afternoon. So we'll get some sunshine in for today. Temperatures on the chilly side, especially up here to the north. Look at this 20 in Clayton, look at 19 in, in Blairsville, 26 up there toward Dalton, 38. A little bit warmer down toward Marietta. 41 would be the warm spot. It's in Atlanta. We've been holding steady right there at 41. Meanwhile, not that far off to the west over toward Carrollton. You're at 29, 32 degrees in Covington, 35, Athens, 36 down toward LaGrange at the current tower. The weather to wear forecast calls for at least a jacket for this morning, right? Once we get to the afternoon, we may just unbutton it or unzip it. It will be a pleasant afternoon for us with plenty of sunshine and 59 degrees. That's where we should be for this time of year. We'll hit that uh, for this afternoon's high. Some spots may get up to 60. High pressure. Dominating the southeast, we got dual high pressure went back off to the west up here to the north as well. So for the next couple of days, as this continues to build in, we're going to be nice and dry. I do think we'll get some clouds in the morning tomorrow as well, and then those clouds will start to clear out, but no precipitation expected out of those clouds. Been talking about these cool starts and these mild afternoons, and that's the pattern that's going to continue for the next couple of days. We'll be cool in the morning and then mild up once we get to the afternoon. Today, we'll do it again tomorrow. I think temperatures down around 33 degrees. We'll mild it up in the afternoon with temperatures getting up to about 61, and then cooling it down once again on Wednesday morning. We'll warm it up as we head into the afternoon. Back again, mild uh, for an afternoon high. And then that warmer air starts to move in as we head toward Thursday. I think, in fact, I think Thursday will be the warmest day of the week ahead of a front that's going to come through and bring a little better chance for some rain. Forecast track model shows the early morning clouds getting out of the way. We'll hold on to the sunshine, looking pretty good. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a few clouds in the area. We'll start to break up by the afternoon. We'll still call it partly sunny skies, certainly by 3, 4 o'clock. That's out of the way, and we'll get the sunshine back in before it sets. Clear skies that night will allow those temperatures to fall off once again. And so Wednesday starts off cool, but by the afternoon with the sunshine, 
It's going to be my pick for the week, right around 66 degrees for a high temperature. More clouds building in to the area by Thursday. So we may start off with some sun, mostly cloudy skies by the afternoon. Then the rain comes in late, closer to the midnight hour. We'll linger through Friday morning, maybe even to Friday mid morning before it begins to settle out of the area. Right now, we'll give it a 40% chance for that rain to be around. That'll be the wettest day of the week right there, our Friday. But notice behind that front, temperatures will cool down as well. We go from 70 for a high temperature on Thursday to Friday, 63, uh, 61 degrees for the high on Saturday under mostly sunny skies. Sunday will be the warmest of the two weekend days at 66 on Sunday with mostly sunny skies. The Spalding County man is behind bars this morning after being accused of murdering his girlfriend. 43 year old Carl Kearney Jr. was arrested Sunday in Maryland and that's according to Prince George County Police. Kearney is facing first and second degree murder charges. Be sure to stay with 11 Alive on air and online as we get the latest details. It is 654 staying on top of some other headlines for you right now. The Clayton County DA says they're struggling to find enough jurors and bailiffs in the courtroom, and that's causing a backlog of cases. Clayton County DA Tasha Mosley is asking the county commission to approve an increase in pay for both roles. Right now, jurors make $25 a day. The DA wants that number to double to $50. For bailiffs, it would go from $10 an hour to $15. They're here all day. Um, the cost of living has gone up. Some employers are not, they aren't happy when they have to serve jury duty or um, grand jury duty. Um, they kind of get real aggressive. Mosley says the county court clerk is getting less than 30% participation from the jury summons they send out. Just into the newsroom, the city of South Fulton is temporarily closing its city hall starting tomorrow as work begins to remove mold in the building. Some staff will be relocated to another office building beginning on Wednesday. A local Olympian from Marietta is now a world record holder. Daniel Hall won the U.S. Track and Field Indoor Championships over the weekend, becoming the first male athlete in history to throw past the 26-meter mark in the 35-pound weight throw. We've been following Daniel and his training at Kennesaw State University and making his victory even sweeter. His training partner and close friend Isaiah Rogers placed second. Congratulations to Isaiah, to Coach Judge, and to Daniel. Daniel, by the way, smashed a 29-year-old record, and this victory sets him up for the Olympic trials where he hopes to cement a spot for a second Olympics. And a huge world championship for Olympian Nick Fink. He graduated from Georgia Tech with an engineering master's degree. Fink is bringing home three world titles, gold in the 100-meter breaststroke and two relays, bronze in the 50 and 200 breaststroke. He's one to watch for Paris. And Chesley, also big congrats to UGA grad Katura Orji, who won triple jump for the third time in a row. Very nice, very nice. Thanks a lot, Cheryl. We're looking at temperatures by noon up to 51. We have the clouds over us now, but those clouds will get out of the way so that by noon we have mostly sunny skies. Going to hold on to it three, through 3 o'clock this afternoon. 59 degrees will be our afternoon high temperature. Going to call it a nice pleasant afternoon for us. By 6 o'clock, clear skies down to 55 degrees, and those temperatures will fall off once again down into the 30s. That's where we'll begin tomorrow morning. 61 degrees will be the high temperature. Going to hold on to the sun through Wednesday, which is my pick for the week. But then by Thursday, we'll get up to 70. But some changes will come with the clouds increasing and the chance for rain late Thursday going into Friday. All-Star Weekend for the Hawks star Trey Young. It's his third appearance in six seasons. He was on the east side. Ice Trey, he had five points. The east set an all-star game record would get this 211 points, beating the west with 186 points. Trey also had a busy weekend. He was in the three-point contest. Um, he had a good showing in both finishing. In the skills contest, uh, we saw him with a tiebreaker loss. In the three-point contest, Damon Lillard beat Trey one final shot. Just one shot short. There's no defense. None at, at all. all. Exactly. Points? They're just throwing them up. Yeah. Put me on the game. Nobody wants to get hurt. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 It's a fun game. It's fun to watch. 211, you can't beat that. No doubt. Have a great day, everybody. See you back here in the morning.